And we start with this developing story this morning. Rio Rancho police say they are on the lookout for a man who they say is pretending to be a cop. Witnesses say the cop impersonator has gone as far as to wear a jacket with the word police on it. He's been going to homes and trying to let homeowners in or talk homeowners rather into letting him in. Police say he's been asking for people's ID and also their vehicle registration. The man is described as five foot ten, about 200 pounds. He has short, dark hair. He again was wearing a long sleeve blue jacket with police and blue lettering. Remember, if you ever feel uncomfortable, you can call 911 to ask them to verify that there is a real police officer standing at your door. And we checked this morning. The man who police say held a woman hostage causing a SWAT situation is still locked up and will need a whole lot of money to get out on bond. Police say Richard Archuleta held his ex-wife against her will inside a home near Central in Wyoming over a cell phone. APD says Archuleta then threatened to shoot the woman and police if officers tried to get inside. He's being held this morning on a $25,000 cash only bond. Happening today, detectives are looking into if a woman already linked to more than a dozen identity theft cases could be linked to even more. 31-year-old Sheila Rosnow is accused of receiving thousands of dollars worth of merchandise delivered to her home. Detectives say it was all bought with stolen credit cards. So far, they've identified 13 victims, but police say based on what they found in her home, she could be linked to many more cases. Armed robbers are on the run this morning after police say they terrorized a northern New Mexico town. Raton police say around 8 Friday morning, a trio entered the medicine shop armed with an AK-47 handgun and taser and stole prescription drugs. They were gone within a minute. The three men left in a red Jeep that turned out to be stolen out of Albuquerque. If you know who they are, you're asked to call police. Happening this week, the 17-year-old Manzano High student shot and killed at a house party this summer would have turned 18 tomorrow. 17-year-old Jaden Chavez Silver was gunned down while hanging out with friends in June. His family wanted to get together this weekend to remember him ahead of his birthday tomorrow. They just truly came out to show how much they love him and miss him just like we do, and it's just, it's just overwhelming. It's beautiful. You might remember Jaden was a football player and a wrestler about to start his senior year at Manzano. His family says he was considering joining the Air Force. Police say he was not the intended target of that shooting. Three people were arrested in connection with his murder. A New Mexico man is waking up at the top of a prestigious list this morning. Forbes says oil and natural gas tycoon Mac Chase here in New Mexico is the wealthiest person in the state. The Artesia resident is worth, get this, $650 million. Forbes writes Chase is a self-made millionaire and active in the Artesia community. His Chase Foundation provides scholarships to local students and helps wounded veterans. It's now 6.05. Turning now to a live look at Washington, D.C. this morning. The Department of Transportation could make an announcement about a new drone registration requirement today. The new requirement could be a geofence, which would use software to keep drones away from airports and certain government buildings. Some government watchdogs want limits on the FBI's ability to use drones for domestic surveillance. The goal is to have the registry in place for the holidays. Also today, a judge could decide if a trial for five Guantanamo Bay prisoners allegedly involved in the 9-11 attacks will move forward. Efforts to try the prisoners came to a halt back in April 2014. This after lawyers for one of the men said members of his defense team were questioned by the FBI about a security breach. After an investigation, a new report shows no one from the defendant's team will face charges. The judge will decide if that means the cases can move forward. This morning, violence between Israelis and Palestinians is expected to continue. It's now been going on for a straight month. The latest yesterday, where a gunman believed to be a Palestinian opened fire in a southern Israeli bus station, killing an Israeli soldier and wounding several people there. Happening this week, Secretary of State John Kerry will meet with Mideast leaders separately to try to help ease tensions. Amazon is going after people who sell fake reviews for products on the site. The company says more than 1,000 people sold five-star reviews through Fiverr.com. Amazon's policy bans fake product reviews, so the company sued those people for breach of contract and violating federal consumer laws on Friday. It says sellers solicit fake reviews everywhere, but its policy is that only the people who made a purchase 
can actually post a review. That's interesting to know. A new federal study may have you rethinking your morning supplements. The study estimates dietary supplements send 23,000 Americans to the ER every single year. The report says the riskiest ones are, of course, weight loss and energy boosting products. Bodybuilding and sexual enhancement products also lead to cardiac symptoms. Supplements don't have to have FDA approval before they're actually sold, nor do they get the kind of testing that prescription drugs actually do. All right, thanks, Kristen. We start with this developing story this morning. Tenants in a northeast Albuquerque apartment complex are waking up concerned about what today will bring, saying they see crime almost daily and management is not helping out. People living at Lincoln Place Apartments near San Pedro and Montgomery say crime is getting worse. From car thefts, break-ins, vandalism, and litter everywhere. One person says the stairs right here are on the verge of breaking. Many tenants say they've tried to bring the crime to management's attention, but they're being ignored. There's kids here. There's little kids here that play around every day. There's single parents. There's, there's, you know, there's a lot of opportunity in this, in this place, but nothing ever gets done. Now we tried reaching out to management to see what they're doing about the complaints. They have not gotten back to us just yet. We turn out to news happening right now. Today, Bernalillo County Sheriff's deputies will continue investigating a possible murder in the North Valley. Deputies got a call from someone at a house on Los Ranchos Road Friday night. After deputies arrived, they found a body. VCSO says it's treating the death as a murder, but would not give specifics as to why. It's hard to determine exactly what took place and what happened. It's preliminary in the investigation, and our investigators are out here investigating. Investigators have been questioning relatives and neighbors. The victim's name is not being released at this time. This morning, a man accused of attacking another man with a long tree branch is still locked up. Police say Henry Greer jumped out of an alley near Central in Louisiana, then hit a man who was walking by on the head. Greer claimed the victim had a machete, but a witness said that victim was not armed. Greer faced a judge yesterday where we learned he has a lengthy criminal history across the country. We did locate criminal history out of California, Colorado, New York, Nevada, and New Mexico. 15 misdemeanors with six convictions. Greer is facing aggravated battery charges this morning. Happening right now, Albuquerque police are asking for your help finding the driver who slammed into a pedestrian, seriously hurting them. It happened near Central and Tramway around 8 Friday morning. APD says the victim was crossing Central at Dorado Place. When he was struck, the driver then took off. At last check, the victim is in the hospital in critical condition. One witness tried to catch the hit and run suspect, but now police need your help. It was followed by a witness and the witness lost it. So we do need help locating that vehicle. If anybody sees a 2006 gold Chevy Impala in the neighborhood with any type of front end damage, please give us a call immediately. Again, the description of the vehicle they're looking for is a 2006 gold Chevy Impella, similar to this one. It should have some front end damage on it. Turn out to a live lookout at Washington, D.C. this morning, where Vice President Joe Biden could announce a presidential bid any day now. Some political analysts think he's waiting to see how Hillary Clinton performs before the House Benghazi Committee later this week. In the meantime, Republican frontrunner Donald Trump is clashing with his rival Jeb Bush over claims he would have prevented the 9-11 attacks. Happening right now, roads in sou Southern California are back open this morning after widespread mudslides last week. Crews spent the last few days pulling dozens of stranded cars and trucks out of tons of mud there. Take a look at your TV screens. Thunderstorms last week caused a serious flash flooding, which then led to the massive mudslides. Authorities in one county say they're still working to clean up a state route that will not be open until Thursday. And heavy rain, flash flooding and mudslides are expected in the Philippines one day after a major typhoon made landfall. The slow moving, powerful storm destroyed homes and displaced thousands of people, a lot of them waiting in waters there. It's expected to stay over the region for a few more days before moving on to Taiwan and the coast of China. That's not what the people who live there want to hear. So it is just around the corner, less than two weeks before Halloween. If you have not gotten costumes for the kids yet, it's not too late. Don't worry. News 13's Catherine Mazone looked into how you can stretch your dime to get a costume for less. She joins us live with all the details. Good morning, Catherine. 
Good morning, Crystal. Halloween costumes can be pricey, let's face it. Ordering online could be a cheaper alternative, but then you have more factors to consider, like shipping costs and delivery dates. We looked into how you can save money with a little creativity. Check it out. Double, double toil and trouble. Fire, burn, and cauldron bubble. It's hard to ignore the Halloween spirit. You look good enough. Especially with decorations plastered in nearly every store. But between candy and decorations, costs can really add up. It's why some parents are opting out of buying pre made costumes and hitting low cost stores to see what they can create themselves. We get a lot of people coming through and just making their own kind of costumes. Uh, everybody's trying to do their uh, do it yourself kind of thing. Savers employee Melkor Quesada sees parents' creativity firsthand. It's really nice to see what they. Uh, customers come up with and what they put together because sometimes I'm kind of like, oh, why didn't I think of that? He helped us put together a few of our own low price costumes. This pirate top is only five bucks. These pants, only three dollars. Throw in these shoes and this hat and you have a pirate costume. The total cost, about twenty dollars. But without shoes, it's only fifteen. Now compare that to online stores and suddenly the prices go up. We found a few pirate costumes for under $30, but scroll down and this one will cost you nearly 80. While several big box stores have costumes at even lower prices, keep an eye out. Some are already out of stock. It's why it should come as no surprise, many parents are bucking the online trend. In fact, according to the National Retail Federation, the vast majority of people say they plan to buy their costumes in a store. Now they're running around and checking everything out and they have ideas of what they want to be. Some parents we spoke to say they go early to try to avoid long lines in packed stores. As for what's hot this year, Quesada says... I've seen a lot of girls do the 50s themes. For boys? All about like the superheroes. Um, they like to make their own little versions of it. Um, I've seen kids like mix up uh, our uh, astronaut costume and make a Buzz Lightyear. And if you really want to stretch your buck, some parents we spoke to say they just plan to reuse costumes from years past. We checked a few big box stores and found if the costume you want is in stock, you can still get it before Halloween. Standard shipping gets your costume here by about the 27th. If you pay a little extra, though, you can get it by the 21st. Back to you, Crystal. All right, thanks so much, Catherine. Now, we found you can also score some deals if you're an Amazon Prime member. According to Amazon, you can still receive your costume before Halloween. That's if you order today, so get on it. This morning, some bus riders have quite the story to tell. You've heard of snakes on the plane, right? How about a snake on the bus? Yikes. It happened in Philadelphia on Sunday. A man snuck his four foot long boa constrictor on the bus by wrapping it around his neck. He tried to hide it under a jacket. Corin Riley says he was on his way to a pet store. The snake apparently did not want to stay still and decided to get some fresh air. That's when Riley says things really went south. She had slid it out of my pocket on the way back and she got stuck in between the chairs. Some people freaked out. Because it was a snake on the bus, and they started talking about snakes on the plane. Freak out? Yeah, that would happen. The bus driver stopped the bus and ordered everyone out. Authorities were called in. Riley did apologize for giving the other passengers quite a scare before Halloween, but he could still face some charges for it.